Hi everyone, my name is Angela from Angela Stitches and welcome to another video. So in this video I'm going to show you all of my finished ornaments and I have most of them in this box and a couple that are displayed in my room so I took those down as well to show you. So the first thing I have here is a Brooks Books design and it's called Baby Cherub and I'll try to link all of the websites below in the description box but yeah, I was trying to do something different with this and added a tassel with some beads. The back looks like this. This was a fabric gifted by one of my viewers, Margarita. Um, the heart bead was also from her. The pearls were mine. I used some jump rings and a piece of wire to make a loop at the end so that I could string them. I might have added some glue to secure the wire inside the ornament. And yeah, so this was a really fun project to work on. I think I'll show you all of my angel ornaments. So this is by Lavender and Lace. It's from their freebie page. I'll link that in the description box. And I made the shape according to the design. So it's like almost a heart shape. And I use cardboards for all of my ornaments. And then for this, um, for this hanger, I used a couple of strands of the memory threads and twisted them together so that it looks similar to the design with the ribbon. But yeah, this was a really fun project to work on too, but also to finish. I'm just trying to organize and I'm going to try my best and group them so that I can show you the things that are similar together. So this is also a lavender and lace freebie angel and this is what the back looks like. And for the edge, I wrapped it around with some shimmering rickrack and some pearl pushpins. And then, oh with this I did one over one skin on a 32 count. I think this might be the only one um, I did skin one over one and then this hanger I used well this was from a shopping bag um, it was a handle of a shopping bag a real nice one so I saved it and I think I used the other one for something else this one is also a freebie from lavender and lace and this I was trying to make a little pocket so it also has a function but yeah the back is just a plain fabric finish and I tried to make a pocket and I didn't know how to go about it so it's a little wonky but still I think it turned out pretty and for this I just kept the edge and the back pretty simple. I think this is the last lavender and lace angel that I have but this was a single design but it came with three different color options for the dress so I ended up doing all three and changed the bows with memory threads and then I changed the hair colors and also the skin colors to represent all ethnicities and this hanger is what I used for the edge on this one and I wanted to try something different so I added this on the bottom here and then the back um, these were in the same pack of fabric so it's the same but in different colors so yeah I guess that's all the angels that I have except this one all of these are by lavender and lace and I'm planning on doing more angels because they have a lot more freebie angels on their website. So the next group is my Halloween stuff. So this was from a Halloween box by Coloring Cotton a couple of years ago. It came with the floss and the fabric, but the design is by Heart and Hand called Creeping It Round, I think. And this is a hand dyed finishing fabric by Coloring Cotton from the same box or from the previous year's box. I'm not really sure. But the only thing that I changed was the white. I got some glow in the dark white and you can't really see it here, but it glows in the dark. Yeah, this was also really fun to stitch and a really quick one. So this is one of my favorites. I love the star on it. I think it goes really well with the design. But this was the smaller design from a bigger chart when it would just go writing by the Prairie Schooler. I finished it really simple with the star ceramic button. This was also from Margarita. She sent me a lot of finishing materials, so I have a lot of stuff to work with. And the back, oh, so it's the same fabric as this one, but I didn't have enough to do the whole thing. So I used the same fabric. Um, this is 32 count Zweigart linen and dirty, and sewed them together with the fabric and added a piece of lace to hide the seam. But I yeah, really like this one. I want to do more perischooler designs, but I haven't gotten any since this one. Oh, this is actually my favorite. I have so many favorites here, but I have this one hanging on my cabinet all year, so. Yeah, this is Oliver by Stacey Nash Primitives. I really like the suede ribbon. I think it goes really well. 
and oh this is the same finishing fabric I really didn't want it to waste any so I ended up finishing three projects with it and also because I really like the fabric and I've never tried sewing a pillow in a shape like this before so it's really messy but I think it's kind of cute I think that's the charm and I did a whole experiment with this to shrink the fabric after I finished stitching it but yeah I'm going to hang this back up after I finish making this video but this is a part of the Animal Cracker series by Stacey Nash and I have a few that I want to start pretty soon and I have a couple that I've already started. I think this is a prairie schooler. This is called Four Seasons, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen here. But I only did the fall one and I'm planning on doing the other ones too and finish it just like this one but with different finishing fabrics. But I wanted to make a tag ornament and I have these rivets so I used that and some string. And this is what the back looks like, and yeah, I should make a note to finish the other three seasons. So this is by Barbara Anna Designs, I think, called Witch Cat. And I think I converted some of the colors to color and cotton and changed the year to 2020. But yeah, I added the hanger, a little different than my other ornaments, but I think I made a finishing video of this. So if I could find it, I'll link those videos below too. Um, because I can't remember all of the details on this. I know I made a video of this one and also this isn't exactly Halloween related but I don't have that many Valentine's Day ornaments so I'm just gonna talk about it here but this was really fun to make and I added a small button on the back because I saw Vana the Twisted Stitcher do this and I really liked it. And also this was the leftover ribbon from Oliver and I think it goes really well with the finishing fabric and the rose and I have these charms, so I added those. So, yeah, this is called Sweet Sentiments by Scattered Seed Samplers. And I converted everything to color and cotton and stitched it on a 40 count 1 over 2. So, yeah, that's all of the Halloween and fall related stuff. Well, except for this one. And these are some of my own designs. And you can find them, well, not all of them, but four of them in my Etsy shop as PDF downloads. So... This is a really simple pumpkin and gratitude design. I kept it really simple and for the shape I made it into a small pumpkin shape instead of a round ornament and I really like that. And this is called Fall is Coming and I stitched mine on a 40 count 1 over 2 so it's really tiny and I love the color changes on this one but my favorite part is the lace that I found and I thought it was perfect to the transition. And I also had this agate stone bead and it had all of the colors that I used in the chart, so I thought that was perfect too. And just a simple burgundy fabric for the back. So this one is called Pumpkin Cat, and I made this one because when I was younger, I thought pumpkins grew on trees like apples. And I used the fabric for the hanger and the ribbon, um, the back as well. But yeah, this was really fun to stitch. Not a lot of colors, but I don't know, I think it's cute. And I think this is something that I had in mind for a while before actually turning it into a cross stitch and then to an ornament. It's called Witch's Cauldron. And instead of stitching the whole cauldron, I added some black ribbon and lace to make it look like the cauldron. So I cut the cardboard into a half circle and added the lace and ribbon for the other half. And the same fabric but in a darker gray color for the back. And these two I made just for myself. I think I made this one first, but this was my first pillow with lace on the edge. So it's really uneven and also really messy, but since it's my first pillow, I really like it. And I made it for my cat who passed away the previous year. Just a little fun project that I did for myself. And then I wanted to do another one, so I made this one. So it's the same cat image, but I added some grass and some flowers in the background and also added her pink toy. And this is what the back looks like. And I added a bunch of laces and ribbons and I really liked it. Um, I had a lot of fun choosing the materials for this one. I went to Michael's and Joanne's for this and it was really fun. So these four in the middle are all available as PDF charts in my shop. And then the next are my Christmas ornaments. So this is by Brooks Books and it's a freebie chart, Mrs. and Mr. Claus. And I stitched and finished Mr. Claus first before starting Mrs. Claus. So even though I really tried to make it exactly the same, it's a little different. 
Mrs. Claus is a little smaller, but I still really like it. I think it's really cute. So these are also freebies, but I did the roses first. Um, this might be my very first ornament. I also have a finishing video of it, but I just followed Cindy's cross stitch finishing video, and then I did the ones with the pansies and used felt for the back. And then this, I actually forgot what it's called, but I know it was a freebie. And I made a finishing video of these three together. And I'm sure I talk about where I got the charts and what it's called in that video. And then I made a finishing video of these two together, I think. So yeah, if you want more information about these, I'll link those videos in the description box so that you can check those out. But I really like this one because of the long rectangle shape. I want to actually design something in this shape, but I haven't yet. But yeah, this was really fun to make with white chenille and just a very simple finish. I also added a little snowflake button and I think it looks really cute. And this is actually a Valentine's Day pillow and I made this one when I was making this pillow or right after I think, but I got this chart from a stitchy box and I think it's just called Valentine's Day by Heart and Hand. Um, I think this rick rack also came with the box. And the charm came with the chart, I think. It's a little tarnished, but it looks okay. Yeah, really cute. I think I should do more Valentine's Day small pieces because I've only done a few and I want to do more. So, yeah, I thought I had more Christmas ornaments, but I guess I only had two. So, all of these I started during Mania last year. And this is called Bryce Tree Ornaments by Brooks Books. And I started all 12 of them during May and finished all of them in 2020. And these are stitched on a 40 count and I converted all of the colors to color and cotton. So there was a lot of planning with this project because I was using the same color for different ornaments and I had to keep a record of the floss and the symbols so that I could come back to work on it again. And also so that I could keep everything cohesive as a set. And I made a video for each of these ornaments when I started them, so I'll link those as a playlist if you want to check those out. And then for finishing, I separated them into two color groups and used the same fabric but in pink and blue and pink and blue ribbons so that it'll match. And it was really fun to stitch them, but also finishing them was really fun. I think I have a finishing video or... It might, it might be a part of a stitching vlog, I think, actually. But yeah, I tried to make each one a little different in shape. So there's squares and rectangles with curved corners and some with sharp corners. I wanted to make another circle one, but there wasn't one that I could do that with. But I was really happy with them when I finished them. And also with my fabric choices and the ribbons, I think the pink and blue was a really good choice. I was going to do another color with a yellow, I think, but I didn't think it went with the design so I took that out but yeah so all of these are stitched on a 40 count converted all of the colors to color and cotton I think I already said that and I get this question all the time when I say I converted something to 40 counts and the question is how do I convert all of the beads and it's pretty simple I just get the smaller size in the same color so I got the petite size petite mill hill size 15s I believe instead of the regular size 11s and the size 15s are perfect on 40 counts in my opinion so I do that with my marabillias as well and I think I want to do another project like this soon it's a really fun project to do if you want to work on something really small but make it a bigger project by doing a lot of them and I already have a project in mind that I want to do next but I'll talk about them in another video so this is the last thing that I have to show you and these are my finished Brooks books and I'll go through these pretty quick because I think I talk about them pretty often. So this is called Fairy Godmother and this is where I got my ideas for adding laces in my ornaments. I think it's super pretty and this was really fun to build and I say that because of all of the details. So the back is pretty simple, I just finished it with felt. But there are so many different elements that I had to do other than the cross stitching. So I had to make things to add made of Krennic ribbons, beads, memory threads. And I also got some extra trims and stuff to add at the bottom here. And I couldn't get the exact materials that were called for this, like the laces. So 
Mine's a little different than in the one in the cover photo for this project, which I don't mind at all. And then all of these I started during Mania a couple of years ago, and I'm still working on finishing the other ones right now. And I finished all of them exactly the same with felt that matches the color of the dresses. And I don't remember all of the names right now, so I'll have it on the screen when I edit this video. But some are a little more ornate than the other ones. Like this one had a lot of things I had to make out of memory threads and krennic ribbons. And also extra paper for the star in the middle. But I really like this one. It was really fun to make this. And this is the back. It's pretty simple. And all of these are stitched on perforated paper. Some are in silver like this one. And this is the back on this one. But most of the ones that I have are stitched on brown paper, I think. Like this one. This one was really fun to finish because of the extra elements. Like the bow on this puppy is really cute. And the roses on her hair. The glasses are really fun, made out of memory threads. And the desserts are really cute. And I have a finishing videos of these as well. So this is the cross stitch angel and I stitched everything exactly like the chart. So the dog was already there, but because I'm a cat person, I designed my own cat for this chart with the same color palette and added her as well. So yeah, I really like this one. The colors are really nice and all the wings on these are all different, like the shape and sizes. And that's one of my favorite things about these angels. And I really like how the dresses show the different time periods. Like this one reminds me of the Renaissance. I might be totally wrong, but I really like how different they all are. And this was the one where I ran out of paper. So I actually sewed two pieces of paper here. So you can kind of see a line, but when I have it on the wall, it's really hard to tell. So I might do that again if I need to. I thought it was a nice trick. And one of the things that I really like to do in cross stitching is to bead. And this one was just filled with beads. So this was a really fun one to work on. I think this had the most components, I think. Like this pocket was really cool to make, but I really like um, making all of these things that goes inside. It reminds me of paper dolls almost. I don't think I'll like play with these because it's pretty fragile, but I just really like that aspect of this one. And I forgot to add hair to this little guy, but I think he still looks kind of cute. So yeah, I think this is my latest finish. This is on a cream color perforated paper. And I like to color coordinate the back with the color of the dresses and also the wings. And I get my felts from Daiso because I find them much more softer than the ones I get from the craft stores. So yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about these. But let me know if you have any other questions about them. So yeah, I guess that's it for this video. Like I said, feel free to comment if you have any other questions about anything that I talked about in this video. I'll try to put links in the description box for everything that I mentioned. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed looking at all of my finished ornaments and I'll see you soon in another video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!